trying to get out of the sun here. Um, so I wanted to talk about Luna's first uh, delivery, Luna's first litter. Um, Luna did really well during her pregnancy phase. <clears throat> she did really well. She ate well. She behaved well. She stayed active. She played with the other kittens, um, the other cats. She had a great pregnancy. Um, we went in at 50 days for x-rays. Um, that was a mess. Um, so there was a new nurse or I don't know. It's a vet's office. I don't know what they call them. Um, but young girl, maybe, I don't know, 18, 19 years old. She looked really, really young. Um, she um, took ZZ, or not ZZ, she took Luna back um, to do the x-ray. And as she went back, I reminded her, I said, I like to get the x-rays from the underbelly. Now, if you ever go to the vet, they all say, oh, for pregnancy, um, you know, wanting to get, I'm trying to get the sun off me, guys. <laughs> it's like in this really weird spot. <clears throat> um, but they, they like to do it, I guess it's called posterior. I don't know. Um, but on the side, they say, oh, you can count the kittens better. You can see the kittens better. No, no. Felines have a Y-shaped uterus, meaning they have it. So it's, so it's like this right? So kittens are up this canal and kittens are up this canal. But if you're looking at it from the side, how, how does that make sense? Anyway, but as a breeder for breeding, you want it up from the underbelly. You can see so, so much better. You can, um, and then get them to email it to you. And then <clears throat> you can play with the contrast and the shadows and all that stuff on your filter on your phone or computer or whatever. So I remind her and she's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And she takes Luna and takes her into the back and brings her back. She's when she brings her back to like, like I don't normally have this nurse. She still had her like vest, like guard for radiography. I don't, I don't know what they call those. Um, and she seemed like frazzled the whole time. Like she, she was new. So I can understand that. <clears throat> um, but then normally I get checked out in, in the room. I don't have to go up and wait while well, everybody talks to the people at the front desk and then pay them but she was like oh yeah yeah pay at the front pay the front so I'm like okay but I need those x-rays emailed to me and she said oh yeah we're gonna email them to you I said okay normally I pay in the room and I get my x-rays in the room like they come to my email and they show them to me on a screen in the room and she she told me she was like oh yeah we think there's like like five I'm like okay like so I go to the front desk Karen's a secretary, see her all the time. Um, so she's like, oh, they're, you're not in the system yet um, for my visit. Let me let me go ahead and call back there. So I said, while you call back there, let them know I still haven't gotten the x-rays in my email yet. Normally I get them before I even leave. Like I get them in the office, sent to my, my email and I can check it on my phone. So she's like, oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so she calls them, they say, oh yeah. And they send the bill over to her computer and they're, she says, oh yeah, they send the, said they're gonna send you the email. It's like, okay. So I have a 50 day pregnant feline and in human terms, that's a third trimester person. Like <clears throat> she's big, she's round, she's due in the next two to two and a half weeks. Like this, this is, she's in her, the beginning of her third trimester. So I pay, everything is fine. I get her loaded up into the car and I drive all the way home. Still no email. I wait. <clears throat> I do things. I do things around the house. Maybe about an hour later, I check my email. Still no email. So I call up there. I'm like, hey, still got my email. She's like, oh, no problem. Let me get you to the back. And we'll see what's going on. They send me the email. The view is from the side. Like, so I'm mad. And I'm like, no, no, no. I always get it from the underbelly. You guys have just wasted my time. I have just paid for an x-ray that does nothing to tell me about how many kittens I should be expecting. So it was a hot mess, but that's, that's that story. Okay, so now jump to the 13th. Today's Friday, Thursday, Wednesday. So Wednesday. And um, this is not something you'll normally see. It sometimes, you know, for breeders, we would see it more often than somebody who just had a cat that just got pregnant. Um, and even as breeders, we don't even see it that often, if any, sometimes. 
um, <clears throat> but she lost her mucus plug, which is kind of gross, sorry, um, on the 13th, which was Wednesday. Um, and I know this because I was actually present and when I saw her losing her plug, um, <clears throat> so I, and when you, when that happens, um, pregnancy or delivery, um, will occur within the next 24 hours. So, um, I started to keep a close eye on her and I put her in her, um, her like delivery space, which is a smaller room with her whelping box. Um, so I can ensure that she has her babies in a safe place. Okay. And so I'm got her in there and overnight happens. Um, so that's Wednesday night happens. She doesn't have her babies Wednesday night. Um, Thursday though, she started to behave as if she was going into labor. So we spent all day Thursday in the bathroom. Um, she did go into labor. Um, or she started at 11. She had four kittens by 12, 30, 12, 20, 12, 30. Um, and then she took a rest and that's normal. Um, sometimes, you know, um, especially when they've got kittens, they come back to back to back to back, which she did. Um, <clears throat> it, it you just, they just lay down for a minute and they, they relax. Um, so she laid down for about an hour. I turned the lights off. They, all the kittens started to latch, um, gave her some space and I left. And normally cats, you don't need to watch them too much. They kind of do their, their own thing. They know what they're doing. 1.30, I go in there and she has not had any more kittens and she's panting and she's <laughs> and they'll do that throughout labor but it's not normally a consistent thing they'll they'll kind of lay down they'll relax they'll clean the kittens um they'll move around a bit um but she was just <laughs> like eyes wide and she was just like this was not going well so <clears throat> um I knew something wasn't right, but there was nothing I could do at that point. It's just, you have to just make them comfortable and just wait, watch and wait. So at this point I know, cause there's a camera in there. So I kind of, I know when she started, um, that's why I went back in there. <clears throat> so I've got the volume on so I can start here and they make like grunting sounds when they're, when they're pushing. So I pray over her and I offer her water. She didn't want any water. Um, she did not drink any water over the course of her labor, which started at 11. So keep that in mind. So I do feed my cat, my breeder cats raw meat. Um, I, they've got, I've got a whole raw, um, like group that I follow and <clears throat> recipes and whatnot, but it is very, um, moist. And so even if she doesn't drink, she's, she should still be fine and stay hydrated. Um, so long as she's eating that. Um, so she did eat that throughout. She ate all the placentas as she should. Um, she didn't want any dry food. <clears throat> and I can see she's in distress. Um, but there's nothing at home that I can do. Not for, for something like that. Um, so I wait. I feel her. I palpate her abdomen. And... I can feel that there's at least two kittens left. So she's had four. We're looking at six. So obviously x-ray thing. Okay. That, that's why I told you that story. Um, the vet's office closes at 530. And I have to pick up my son from camp at 530. So I say in my head, four o'clock. I'm going to give her till four o'clock. If she does not pass the kitten by four o'clock, I got to take her to the vet. And then if they keep her, they keep her. But either way, you know, they'll have her and I'll go pick up my son and then we'll figure out what to do from there. So four o'clock comes, still no kitten. She's still visibly distressed, panting, um, meowing like, Hey, you know, help me. <clears throat> Not like over and over again. Cause that would be really sad, but, um, you know, meow, you know, like, Hey, Something's wrong. You, you know, you need to help me out here. Um, I call the vet. I said, hey, I have an emergency. I tell them what's going on. They tell me to come in. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. I got a, uh, <clears throat> an allergy to milk, but I like it. So I put in my coffee. So it's 830 in the, or it's eight something in the morning. 
And, um, yeah, so I had milk on my coffee. And so now it's like, um, so I'd bring her up there. They, uh, do x-rays. I had the right person today, uh, or that day. And they tell me that the one that is in the birth canal, and we look at the x-ray so I could see it also, is, um, got, he's got a big old head, pretty much. Um, we measure it. It's pretty big. Got a big old head. Um, but it's also, um, presenting like this. So, like, this is its head and my wrist being its neck. So, it's presenting like that where the... <clears throat> the neck is actually being pushed through the canal first. So the head is being pushed to the chest and this is what's coming through. So it already has a big head, but then also like the head and the neck are trying to come through at the same time. So she gives me options or they're closing soon. And the vet actually has a broken arm. So she can't, she's like, I can't do it here because I can't perform it. So she tells me to call this emergency vet that I've used before, but they're really, they're crazy expensive, like stupid expensive. And I don't know why companies do that, guys. Tell me why. Why do companies do that? It's an emergency. Just because it's an emergency, you're working a different shift. People, people work different shifts all over the place. You've got people who work at restaurants and at the, gro at the grocery store and at retail stores who work in the evening and make the same amount of money as other people. You're a vet. You have the same, ed okay, not the same education because I can't say that, but you have the same <clears throat> job as other veterinarians who are open during the day and you have chosen to work in an emergency setting where your hours are overnight or whatever, right? And yet, and, and so you want to charge a million dollars for stuff? That's, that's crazy. No, that is not right. That's my opinion, but I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure other people have that same opinion. Uh, you don't have to agree with me, but <laughs> that's, that's my opinion. <clears throat> um, call the vet's office, the emergency vet's office. They don't open till six o'clock. So my vet sends me away at five. So I now have an hour. Um, I have to go pick up my son. I'm not going to pick him up with a pregnant cat who is in active labor and her four kittens who traveled with us to the vet's office because they were already nursing and, and latching and all that stuff. So they, they travel. If the kittens are actively nursing and suckling, they will go with the mom to vet appointments. So if there's an emergency with mom and the kittens are not being hand fed, they go with mom. Um, we go home. I drop her back in her whelping room. And then I left to go get my son from camp. Um, went and go picked him up. <clears throat> got, I came back home. Um, it was after six o'clock by that time. I'm trying to call. Nobody's answering the phone. Are you open? I've, you know, it's been, it's been a, over a year since I've used them. Um, do I just come? Do I have to let you know? I, I mean... I don't normally use this, this vet office. Nobody's answering the phone. So I check in on Luna. You know, she's still having contractions. Keep in mind, this started at 11. And except for her resting period, she was having active contractions. And if, you've, if you're a woman and you have ever had a baby, you know that they come and they come regularly. So hours and hours of doing that. Probably 6.45, 7 o'clock. Nobody had answered the phone. I left them a message. Um, the automated system said that somebody would call. Um, so I'm waiting. 7 o'clock. Um, I check in on her and she had passed the kitten. Um, it did not survive, as you can imagine. It came through that weird way. It just, it, it was not going to end well. So I immediately removed it from her space. Um, and she, um, within the next few minutes, started to um, deliver the final kitten. Um, so, and she was just like, she didn't even clean it. She didn't even eat, take care of the placenta. She didn't, um, like 
you know, break the umbilical cord or anything. She was just like, girl, I am tired. So I cleaned it up, um, but it wasn't breathing. It was limp. Um, so I got some paper towels, started rubbing it down real good. Um, got the bulb syringe. Um, if you are a breeder or if you have a cat that's pregnant, you need to have a bulb syringe. It's one of the most important things that you will have with you when you are delivering. Because when you have a kitten that passes and you have a mom who is either preoccupied with maybe d doing um, a second kitten right behind it, or is just exhausted from labor, or is a new mom and just doesn't know, you have to have that. So you wanna go in to the sides, just like you would a human baby, and suck out all the fluids, and then you get it beside the tongue and then turn it to the back of the throat and, and point it kind of up to the roof and suck that way as well. And then you wanna do the nose. You got little tiny little nostrils. So your bulb syringe should actually fit all the way completely around each of the nostrils. So you wanna line it up and suck it out and do each side. And then you just like briskly like, you know, rub them and you know, get their, their neck and their chest and just rub and rub and rub and rub and just, you know, all over. <clears throat> and eventually, you know, the kitten starts waking up and um, moving around and making little noises and so we, you know, and now it's like, it's like the strongest of all the kittens. It's like, move out of the way. I'm getting a nipple. Um, so, um, so that one's doing good. Not sure if it's a girl or a boy. It was the last one. So I didn't check. Um, I normally check as I go, um, weigh them, check them, give them right back to mom. Most times she doesn't care because she's in active labor. But at this point, I didn't want to stress her out anymore because they do make little meow sounds when you're, you know, picking them up and putting them on the scale and the scale is cold and they're not with mommy and they're like, why am I being lifted like this? And it's, you know, <clears throat> so I didn't want to stress her out any more than her crazy day already. So just dried it up really good down um, inside the whelping box next to mommy and then just put it with the rest and it went to town. It was like... This is where I'm supposed to be. Let me get in there. So it, it did good. And she was still not okay. She was still panting and she was still breathing heavy. Like mouth open, tongue out, <sighs> heavy, heavy, short breaths. And so of course I'm worried, like, is she gonna be okay? So I offer her food, she doesn't want to eat. I offer her water, she doesn't want to drink. So all I can do is comfort her, right? Pet her, tell her she's pretty. Always tell women they're pretty, even if they're a cat. Um, and turn the lights out and gave her some space. That's all I could do. So I leave the room, close the door, and I get a call from the emergency vet office. And they want to know why, what I need and this and that. And I'm like, like I left a message on your voicemail. Um, I was inquiring about a C-section or a cesarean. Um, I don't need it at this point, but I was just curious that if I did in the future, what would something like that cost at your establishment? You know what they said? Can anybody guess what they said? $10,000. $10,000 folks. Can you believe that? That is crazy. Now I live in Georgia. Um, and we have a company here called Catsnip. It's, um, it's a company that does like affordable, um, spay and neuters and they're actually mobile too. So they have like these, like, um, like medical vans, like huge vans where, you know, you drop your cats off and they get fixed and you pick them up later in the day. Um, they also have like buildings where you drop them off and, and it's a medical establishment and they offer other services too, like vaccines and flea medication and just all that stuff, uh, microchipping, all that. Um, you get a spay or a neuter there, it's under a hundred bucks. And I'm talking about everything, including the medicine they go home with, a collar, everything. These people, and, and when, when you go to have a female fixed, they completely remove the uterus. So I can imagine it's probably <clears throat> pretty similar to a cesarean.
you're cutting the abdomen open. Um, at least with the cesarean, you're cutting the abdomen open and you're going into the uterus. You are extracting the kittens, right? And then you're sealing, you're closing everything up. I, I would think that it would be even less evasive. I mean, I get you've got to now close this and close that and, you know, you don't want to risk, you know, issues with the uterus and blow. I'm not medically trained, but I'm just, I can only imagine. Um, so $10,000 folks. I'm like, that is insane. This is what I was talking about earlier. When I said that these people are taking advantage of people who are in a time of need, like that's not okay. Like that, that should be illegal. Your services, regardless of the time that you provide your service should cost the same period. Okay. Rant over. <laughs> um, so that's, that's how Luna's first litter went. Um, she rested all night. She did so good. I checked on her a few times and she has calmed down. Her breathing has calmed. First, I was really worried and I tried to call the vet, um, but they didn't have their answering service turned on. It was, it was something else like talking about, they were like in an enrichment class or something. I don't know, but, um, it just, the whole thing just did not go as planned, but this is what it's like to be a breeder. And people say, oh, I want to breed cats. That sounds so cool. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to do that. And then I could stay home like you. And, um, it's, a, it's a lot. Um, yeah, I have the freedom of, you know, right now I'm just out about doing stuff and, um, taking the kids here and there and I can do that. Um, but you ha it takes a special person to be a breeder. If we look back on that day, we have, you know, a cat who was in distress. We have uh, a kitten that passed away. We have, you know, other things in my, in my life that were going on. You know, I had to go pick up my son. Um, I have other cats. I have other breeder cats. So I have other cats that, you know, need to be fed and need to be played with and, you know, litters need to be cleaned and floors need to be mopped. Um, you know, litter, they, they track litter everywhere. It sticks to, and these are Maine Coons guys. So they have like these big furry paws. Okay. So they go into the litter box with these big furry paws. Okay. And then it sticks. And then I put these mats right outside the litter box and it doesn't matter. They jump right out and they're huge cats. So what, what happens when they're huge cats and they're jumping out of the litter box? They go all the way over the, the mat that I've laid down. They're like right at the edge. Like they don't come out all dainty like and, you know, touch their little feet on the mat as they go. No, they're like, Wah! and they jump out and they're like at the edge. But I can't put the mat like a mile away from the kitty litter. I have like a house. Like that just, that's crazy. But anyway, um, and then I've got you know, cats in a catio. I got my, I keep my male cat separate and they are in the catio, um, mostly full time. And so I got to go out there. I got to sweep. I got to clean. I got to move stuff around. Got to refill stuff. Got to check the water. I sit out there and play with them and pet them for a while. So, you know, yesterday that didn't happen. I did not clean their cage yesterday. Um, I did not get a chance to play with the kittens yesterday. When everything settled down, um, gosh, it's probably almost midnight by the time I got, you know, my life together after a day of doing nothing but sitting with Luna. Um, I was then able to go in and sit with the kittens for a few minutes and have my boys come and sit so that we could all just play with them and, you know, get their energy out and socialize with them. Um, but it takes a special person to be able to handle the stress of it all. Um, and not only that, but just to critically think through each thing, do your research calmly and not be freaking out and frazzled. And I hear so much of that. Um, I see it, I hear it. Um, I read about it online <clears throat> and that's why not everybody should just go out and breed. So I'm going to make more videos like this. Um, I've put a couple of videos up um, about like cattery duties and I'll try to do more of those. Um, just like little things that I do, <clears throat> not little things, some of them are big things, but um, I will try to do little videos of 
of the duties that are involved with breeding cats um, and what that, that looks like. Um, so follow, like my page, um, subscribe and all that good stuff. And, um, and I'll, I'll make more of these videos. And if you have questions or if there's anything you want to, uh, have me talk about or videotape, or if you want to see something more, um, let's just keep it cattery related or cat related. Um, if you have personal questions, you can put them in the comments below. Um, and so long as it's appropriate, I might respond. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great day.